Thank you. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> I thought I totally burned you out after Chief Joseph's last dream. <laughs> stuck in his head sometimes, and the only way to get him out was to write a song very similar to it that he would write himself, and then that would that would uh, purge that song from his mind. So that's what I did. If this song did nothing else for the rest of my career, it did purge driving my life away out of my head. Well, I've been rolling out my window, listening to the radio, baby, wants me to stay, but I think I'm gonna go with my hired daughter. I stop by at the corner store, buy myself a popsicle, take her to the disco, baby. You're like a bird out on a wire. Every time I get next to you, you holler out, help, there's a fire. Day I wanna be your lover, but you tell me that I'm just a kid, but not another guy around you, your lover, like I know, baby. You're like a bird out on the line. Every time I get next to you, you holler out, help, there's a fire. Let that sucker burn, mom. Centigrade. Yeah. 
I was up in the Shetland Islands freezing to death. <laughs> I had a big old world warm woolly hat on and jackets and things. Hanging out there was a dang near snow one. <laughs> I was loving it. Um, I would like to publicly, very, very publicly and, and uh, heartfelt say thank you to Mark Scott for putting on a great day. <laughs> Cracking for our Jason show. It was a whole lot of fun and a great time tonight for sure. And Mark does this, you know, he's not like one of those professional promoters, right? He does it because he loves doing it. It's a, you know, he, he likes to bring musicians and people together and, and create these cool shows. Um, and, you know, I can honestly say without any reservation, you smashingly succeeded today, <laughs> Mark. That's for sure. And honestly, he's better than most promoters, <laughs> better professional promoters. That's the truth. We're very lucky to have him in Sheffield and very lucky as musicians to have him as part of our touring, you know, system that we can use to get our music to people, you know. So, um, after the show, by the way, I'll be back there at the table, you know, the merge table. I've been out of uh, Jason Ringenberg and Scorcher CDs for the last week, so it feels good to actually be able to say that. <laughs> I have a merge table tonight. <laughs> But if you don't want to buy something, you know, I'll shake hands, sure, take a picture, yeah, right. I will, I promise. <laughs> Alright, the last song I'm going to do tonight is, um, it's an old Merle Haggard song. Um, and I've been, I've been, you know, into this song as long as I can remember being into music, really. Um, I recorded it in 2004. It's called Rainbow Stew. Um, and I first heard it, believe it or not, we were out, I was out with my brother and my dad on the, in the fields, and uh, it was over the truck AM radio, uh, you know, out of this you know, 65 Chevy truck, old blue truck that dad had, and, uh, you know, gear shift on the floor, and had his name painted on the side, you know, with all the names of the kids and stuff, and um, by the way, dad was I, just a cool thought of him. All the other farmers, in those days they always put their names on the truck, on the side of the truck. Now, invariably they would say, you know, Bill Smith and son, you know. Uh, or at best, it would be Bill Smith and then they might list the boys' names, Ron and Bill or something like that, you know. But dad, you know, he said Marvin Ringenberg, you know, and then he listed every name of his five kids, including the girls. You know, it was revolutionary. <laughs> he was a real radical in Sheffield, Illinois. <laughs> Uh, one time, <laughs> one time, this is the 60s, right, you know, and um, we went into the, to the cafe there on Main Street in Sheffield, and in Sheffield, Illinois, you know, we're, we're way, way more progressive than you people here in Sheffield. You? <laughs> you, know, you're, you know, your whole driving thing here is it's so, it's so complicated, you know, in, in Sheffield, Illinois, and you should take this in advantage, you should come over there and just see what we've done there, because it's, it's quite ingenious. We just park right out in the middle of the street. <laughs> there's just two lanes. There's, you know, there's there's three lanes. There's one lane over here and a lane over here, and then two lanes here. And you just park right in the middle of the street, and it works fantastically in Sheffield, Illinois. For the life of me, I don't know why you don't do it here. <laughs> but anyway, we were out there in the fields, you know, and um, we were castrating hogs. Oh, all right, that's what we were doing the day that I heard this song, and. You know, Dad was a hog farmer, and I don't mean like, you know, a few pigs to raise to eat. You know, Dad was a big hog farmer, and he raised it all the old-fashioned way. You know, there wasn't any of those hog confinement systems, you know, where they never see sun or anything like that. This was an old-fashioned hog farm. You know, the, the sows would farrow, that means have babies, out in the, out in the fields in these little A wooden sheds. Each sow would have its own little shed. You know, there's grass around. It was pretty, pretty cool, pretty bucolic, you know. And um, anyway, the, the the whole bummer of the thing, you know, in the spring and the fall, the job we hated more than any job of all on the farm was we had to round up all these little baby pigs, and there might be 500 of them at a pop, and we would have to vaccinate all of them, you know, for all the diseases, and um, and then we would have to castrate the, the babies, uh, the boys, and um, this was. Was, no matter what you did, or no matter how well you planned, this was a horrible, awful job. You know, the veterinarian did the thing, but she had to hold the pigs. 
And, uh, you know, each person hold, held one pig, and, and there would be 300 of them, you know. So it's in the spring or the fall, so we would get behind every year, you know. You'd have to, you know, plant the corn or harvest the corn, you know. And, and you know, this was all done with really small tractors and really old stuff, and we always got behind. So these pigs, instead of castrating them, you could hold them, you know, when they, were, when they weighed 20 pounds, you know, like 10 kilos. You know, we would have to do this, you know, when they would get, you know, um, you know, more like 60 pounds, you know, about half the size that we were, you know. And we'd sit there, and golly, they'd be screaming, and oh, it was a horrible, awful job, and your arms would be so sore, you thought you were gonna fall, they were going to fall off. So I mean, to this day, you know, people say, golly, the music business must be so hard for you, I, you know, brother, you have no idea. <laughs> you know? The worst thing the music business can throw at me is a day at the park compared to castorating hogs. So anyway, the reason I'm telling you this is that this song is so freaking good that it can cut through the memory of that of those horrible experiences the first time I heard this song and still have me singing it, you know, 40 years later. That's, that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a sign of a good song. So I've been awarded a lot of honors in my life. I've been given a lot of great compliments, but that one compliment, that one honor, that one award still eludes me of someone coming up and saying, Man, I first heard Broken Misty Glass. We were out castrating hogs, and I still love that song, Jason. It's never happened. There's a big black cloud in the city, and the countryside is thin. The price of life is too high to give up. It's about to come down again. When the worldwide war is over and done And the dream of peace comes true We'll all be drinking that free bubble up And eating that rainbow snake When they find out how to burn water And the gasoline cars are gone When airplanes fly without any fuel And the sunlight heats our home One of these days when the air clears up And the sun comes shining through We'll all be drinking that free bubble Thank you. 